How we doing, folks? Your host, Moose, here on the Pitt Panthers Football Network as we welcome you to Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, as your Pitt Panthers will be taking on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in an ACC Coastal matchup. Both teams middle of the conference right now, 2-2 two and two for the Panthers, 2-3 and three for the Yellow Jackets in the Coastal. So it's a big game for both teams to try and salvage something of their season. So we'll take you out to the game Thursday Night Football. And it's Pitt and Georgia Tech as the Yellow Jackets will kick off Quadri Henderson back to receive it. He will take it out of the end zone. Cuts outside. He's at the 20. He's at the 30. He's made a few men miss, but he's taken down at about the 40-yard line. Very good return for Henderson. And the Panthers will start off with great field position. They'll open up with George Aston in motion. And the handoff to Darren Hall. And Darren Hall breaks through for a really solid run, of course, coming off a fantastic performance in the last game. 121 yards on the ground and two touchdowns for the junior running back, who had easily his best game in this entire dynasty for your Pitt Panthers in a big uh, victory over the Virginia Cavaliers. So, Danucci now under center, he's going to take a look, and he's going to hand it off to Quadri Henderson on the jet sweep. Henderson not going to find anywhere to go, though, and he has nothing to show for it. So Henderson, we know how much of a dual threat he's been running the ball, passing, uh, receiving the ball, excuse me, and in the return game, so the Panthers will want to get him involved, just like they want to get Jester Wea involved, their best receiver, the senior, gets a 13-yard grab there for a big third down conversion for the Panthers as they set up first and 10. We are in motion as they hand off to their you know, two-headed monster in this place, Quadri Olsen, who is their leading rusher on this season. He gets five, and it's going to set up a third and manageable four for the Panthers with Danucci in the shotgun. He's back to pass. Looking, looking, looking. He looks over the middle, throws into double or arguably triple coverage. Doesn't get anywhere near his receiver, and the Panthers will be forced into a field goal attempt. And Jay Bump, the normally reliable kicker, he had been 11 for 12 on the season had been the freshman coming into that kick. He misses, pulls it to the left, and the Panthers will turn the ball over to Georgia Tech, still scoreless at 0-0. We know that the Yellow Jackets have a triple option offense that can really eat up some yards if you don't play at home, you know, stay sound in your fundamentals, and the Panthers are gashed for 16 yards on the opening play from scrimmage for this Yellow Jackets offense. Now it's their quarterback, Matthew Jordan, is back, and he throws a nice pass out to C.J. Leggett, who turns it into a 17-yard catch and run. So not a lot of passing that you expect out of the Yellow Jackets here, but they do pass there and get the first down. Here in the flex bonus, Jordan here, a little triple option. He cuts back to his left and picks up nine yards before being flattened by Salim Brightwell to set up a second and one. They put green in motion. Jordan's going to keep it himself, and he does just enough to get the first down. He's brought down by Jordan Whitehead, but he goes for six and the first down. Got a man in motion here as they run the option here. Jordan pitches it out. That is Green. We talked about J.J. Green and what an impact player he can be as he has over 900 yards rushing this season. That's 15 more, and it sets Georgia Tech up with great field position first and goal here. Jordan fights off two tacklers. They miss him in the backfield, but Green is eventually going to be brought down by Dane Jackson and freshman Darren Toth on the tackle, setting up second and goal. Jordan now he goes outside decides to keep it and he's brought down a great tackle that's a Vontae Maddox uh, joining up with Bright One Whitehead to make the tackle so Jordan back to pass now third and goal decides to scramble and run it he's brought down for a loss that's going to be James Fold it's Jason Jordan actually the freshman getting into the backfield making the sack and Georgia Tech will have to settle for a very short 20 yard field goal attempt which they knock through the uprights to take an early three to nothing lead. So it's second and 10 now for the Panthers. Danucci in the shotgun as he'll be back to pass. Takes him in and looks and he throws into tight coverage. Nowhere to go and it's nowhere near his receiver either. So Danucci looking a bit flustered here to start off this contest. Third and 10 as Ben drops back to pass. He settles in and he well overthrows Jester Wee on that one. So Danucci just won for his opening five passes and the Panthers are forced into a punt. And Georgia Tech will start off with the triple option from their own 25. Jordan decides to pitch it. That's J.J. Green in space. The Panthers are giving chase, but nobody's going to catch him. Avante Maddox, Jordan Whitehead can't get him from behind and J.J. Green's 
scampers into the end zone from 75 yards out for the Georgia Tech touchdown. And the Panthers are on red alert here early in the first quarter in Atlanta. As you can see, the Yellow Jack is 141 yards on 10 plays. They're averaging 14 yards a play. The Panthers are averaging just now for the Panthers, but they set things up second and four. It's a handoff that's Olison into space. Some very good blocking, and he rumbles his way forward for 10 yards and a first down. Jordan Whitehead now. We know how dangerous he can be on both sides of the ball. He's into the offensive attack. Whitehead gets the handoff. He scampers forward, cuts to the outside, gets seven yards for the Panthers for a decent gain on that jet sweep. Second and three now, Danucci in the shotgun with Olison to his right, and he's going to hand it off to Quadri Olison, who rumbles his way up the middle for five yards and another Pit Panther first down. So Quadri Olison running with some purpose here early on, and the Panthers are moving the ball with uh, Danucci not going to the air just yet. But second 12, he does go to the air. He's found Jester Wea, who does a really good job, makes a great play. He is leveled and flattened on that one, takes a big hit, but he picks up the first down on a 17-yard Reception. So first and 10 for the Panthers on the Georgia Tech 32. Come out in a heavy set eye formation loaded to the right. And they will hand off to Darren Hall who pushes his way forward for about four yards. Setting up a second and six as we close out the first quarter with your Pitt Panthers trailing early. 10-0 to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets here in Atlanta. So we are back. It's third and five for the Panthers. They're going to need first down yards as it's a bit of a long field goal. About the same length that they missed from early in the first quarter. And they're going to throw the screen. It's Jester Wea. He's into the open field and he is into the end zone. Some fantastic blocking from the Panthers receivers. Downfield, Wea takes the screen and he is all the way into the end zone for the Pitt Panthers touchdown. And Georgia Tech's advantage is now down to 10 to 7. Triple option as Jordan steps outside. They pitch to C.J. Leggett. It's a good tackle by Paris Ford, but Leggett is going to go down, and that's actually Dwayne Hendricks we can see has picked up an injury for the Panthers, which means freshman Sean Wolfgang, the true freshman, is going to be in at left end for the Panthers to see what he can do. Third and five for Georgia Tech. Jordan Whitehead nearly comes up with the interception, but he does get the deflection, forces the Yellow Jackets into the punt. So it's first and ten. Danucci sends Jester Wea in motion, and it's a handoff. It's Quadri Olison trying to squeeze his way up the middle as he weasels his way through a few blockers and picks up five. So second and five now. Darren Hall in as the setback for the Panthers with Aston as his fullback. Aston will lead the way for Darren Hall, and he gets forward through the hole in six yards and another Pitt Panthers first down. So We can see the Panthers getting solid chunk yardage when they keep the ball on the ground. And Danucci's just going to hope to you know, lock up his mistakes so far. And that's not going to do it right there. He throws out wide looking for Henderson. Austin's going to take it away. And he could go all the way to the house. It's a Georgia Tech pick six and touchdown for Lawrence Austin. Danucci under throws the ball. Austin undercuts the route. And he takes it back for six. And Georgia Tech is back in front by 10 midway through the second quarter. Play action now for Danucci as he's going to drop back to pass. He rolls out and he's going to be brought down for a sack. He can't escape the pressure from Victor Alexander. And it's going to be second and 16 now for the Panthers. Danucci in the shotgun again. They're going to set up a screen. He's going to look for Quadri Olison, but not a lot of room moving forward, and Olison gets just a single yard, so the Panthers offense is really out of sync right now. They're trying to play from behind, and they're forced into passing downs here. It's third and 15. Danucci, though, finds Aaron Matthews, who goes in motion across the middle. Nice little skinny post for Matthews, and Danucci finds him for a big first down, so showing some confidence to Danucci. Not rattled after that interception. He throws a strike to Matthews and gets the first down, second and seven. But he's well off target there, looking for Wea on the crossing route. And it's going to set up third and long for the Panthers. So Danucci, his accuracy is kind of all over the place right now. And the Panthers will need a big throw from him here on third and 12. He's going to roll out to his right. He's looking. He's got three or four targets, and he's intercepted. His target ends up being a Georgia Tech defensive back. That is Corey Griffin making the interception as Danucci was trying to find. He had three or four receivers crossing as he rolled out to look for them. He underthrows the ball again, just doesn't put any loft on it, and Corey Griffin 
takes it away. And C.J. Leggett powers his way forward for 12 and a Georgia Tech first down as they could really punch the Panthers in the mouth here if they can score another touchdown. Jordan is leading the way. He's taken down there by Salim Brightwell, but it's a nine-yard carry to set up a very manageable third and two for the Yellow Jackets. They've done a good job of converting so far, but Jordan, the triple option. Paris Ford is going to come up, and coupled with Jordan Whitehead, they bring down Matthew Jordan and will set up a field goal for the Yellow Jackets from about 45 yards. That kick is up, and that kick is good. A great kick, and Georgia Tech ahead 20-7. to I don't think anybody would have expected this as the Panthers come into a very hostile environment, but one that you'd expect they'd do well in. That's Darren Hall taking a pass underneath from Ben DiNucci for six, setting up second and four. So DiNucci will be under center. He's going to send Wea in motion and drop back to pass and take a look. And he's found Jester Wea, so another catch for the senior receiver. That's 12 yards and a Pitt Panther first down. They're moving the ball near midfield late in the second quarter. DiNucci in the shotgun, three receivers off to his right, and he's going to look that way. He throws it up, looking for Wea, and it's Corey Griffin again coming across and forcing the third interception of the day from Ben DiNucci, one of the worst games of the first year starters entire season, if not the worst so far, as DiNucci's got three turnovers, and Georgia Tech could put a nail even further into the Panthers' coffin if they can score here at the end of the first half. But they're running the hurry up for who knows what reason why. They'll get the ball to start the second half, but Jordan's going to throw it to the outside. Whitehead blankets the receiver. Jordan has to throw it away, and the Panthers will get a chance to come away with the ball. DiNucci he has really struggled thus far, but he's got 36 seconds and two timeouts to try and get the Panthers into scoring position for, at the very least, a field goal. And he's going to look out wide. He's got Quadriol since a nice catch. He's going to be second and inches, and the Panthers will have to burn a timeout. Five wide set for Danucci as he's going to drop back to pass here again. Rolls out to the right, and he's got plenty of room. We know what kind of ability he has with his legs, and he is going to scramble and get out of bounds for the first down so the Panthers can hold on to that timeout for right now. Matthews in motion again. Danucci forced to roll out to his right as he has on many plays, and he overthrows Jester Wee again. He's just been leading his targets too much in this game, and unfortunately that pass goes incomplete, so it'll be second and ten. Five wide set. Danucci drops back. Plenty of time to throw. And he's got Rafael Arujo Lopes. Good solid catch by one of the Panthers' most sure-handed receivers. And that's going to be 16 yards and a first down. Danucci rolls out to his right again. He's looking. He's looking. He just gets the ball away as he's leveled there. And it's going to be second and 10 for the Panthers. Just seven seconds left to play. They will bring the offense out, hoping to get a little bit closer as they're not in field goal range just yet. Danucci throws. He's found Quadri Henderson. He does a great job getting out of bounds with two seconds left. So Jay Bump will come out and attempt a 46-45 roundabout yard field goal. And that kick is up, and that kick is good. Jay Bump redeems himself with his longest career field goal from 45 yards, and the Panthers will go into the half trailing number uh, unranked Georgia Tech 20 to 10 here at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. So it's really been a struggle for the Panthers thus far. You know they've done very well gaining the ball. Danucci's up to 133 passing now thanks to that last drive. 83 on the ground but Georgia Tech is gashing them. 173 on the ground. They've done really well getting 10 and 15 yard gains. Of course JJ Green had a big touchdown so it's been some big plays for Georgia Tech. The Panthers will need to start stacking the box and forcing Georgia Tech to pass if they want to come away with a victory. So we'll see you for the second half. So Georgia Tech to take the ball to start the second half here. They had such great success on the ground. The one thing the Panthers can take solace in is J.J. Green only had four touches. He did have a huge 75-yard run and 97 yards. 
but he only had four touches. CJ Leggett with a nice piece of offense there, catches the ball outside for 12 yards and a first down. He's going to go in motion, but Jordan will keep it here. He is going to get a first down. He's into the open field. Avante Maddox is going to push him out at the 23-yard line. It's a 23-yard carry for Matthew Jord Jordan and a Georgia Tech first down. So triple option now for Jordan. Tries to take it outside, but that is a great tackle. That's the freshman Barry Jenkins, the second, getting into the backfield, shutting that down. And now it'll be third and four for Georgia Tech. And Jordan's going to drop back to pass on something you typically expect. He finds Marcus Marshall, but he's brought down by Salim Brightwell and Paris Ford joining together on the tackle. It's going to be fourth and seven and a field goal attempt for the Yellow Jackets. And that kick is up and that kick is no good. It's to the left, pushed to the left, exactly the same as the Panthers did early in this contest. And things remain all square at 20 to 10. And Quadri Olison is going to make his mark on this game. That's 15 yards into the open field for a Panthers first down. So great blocking, great running, and a first down for the Panthers. Second and six, and Danucci's back to pass. We know all about his struggles in the first half, but he goes underneath a little check down to Olis in there. That's six yards and a first down. So third and five now. Danucci in the shotgun with Olison to his left, three receivers to his right, and he drops back to pass. He's looking. It was the same play that the Panthers scored the touchdown on in the first half. Georgia Tech sniffed it out. Danucci goes down to a sack, and the Panthers will be forced to punt it away. First and ten, that's Jordan rolling out to his right, and he is smacked in the backfield by DeMar Hamlin. Second and 14, and now third and six for the Yellow Jackets. Jordan back to pass. This is surely not as many times as Georgia Tech would like to pass in a game. Jordan Whitehead with a great tackle. That is J.J. Green catching the ball out of the backfield, but the Panthers bring him down and force a Georgia Tech punt. So no offense so far for the Yellow Jackets. The Panthers unscathed here and hoping to try and come back from this deficit, Quadri Olison rumbles his way forward. That's a 13-yard gain and a Panthers first down. Darren Hall now checks in in the backfield for the Panthers as they have a heavy set off to the right with two tight ends. Hall, though, is going to cut it back to the left and pick up eight yards. So the Panthers' two-headed rushing attack doing a nice job moving the ball down the field. It's Olison back in now for the Panthers. He's got Flanagan to his left, Clark to his right, tight end-wise, and then men split out to each way. It's going to go to Olison though. He's just going to stumble his way forward for four yards behind the left side of his line and get the Panthers to the first down. Flanagan goes in motion to the, the right of quarterback Danucci, who's in the I formation. He's going to go play action to Darren Hall and roll out. Danucci looks, finds George Aston. That's the fullback as the safety valve, and that's a eight-yard gain for the Panthers, setting up now third and three with Danucci under center. He's got Aaron Matthews in the slot to the right, but he or left, but he hands it off to Darren Hall, who hits a hole to the right behind his right guard. Alex Books are opening up that line. He picks up just enough for the first down. So they've got Henderson off to the left, Aston to the right, and it's going to go to Henderson on the handoff. He sweeps up to the right-hand side. He may have just enough, but he's going to be brought down just short of the goal line. A 14-yard carry for Henderson that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. The Panthers still down 10 points, but knocking on the doorstep. Can they escape from upset alert here in Atlanta? Tune into the fourth quarter to find out. So we welcome you back here. First and goal for the Panthers to open up the first, fourth quarter. Danucci's going to hand off, and Quadri Olison is going to squeak through the middle of the offensive line and get into the end zone for the Panthers' touchdown as they cut the Georgia Tech lead to 20-17. to 17. So that rushing attack for the Panthers did a great job just picking up consistent yardage, keeping the Georgia Tech offense off the field as well and setting up great, uh, you know, a great scoring drive for the Panthers. Jordan gets outside for just a two-yard run. The Panthers are really content with Jordan to run the ball. They're taking away any options with the pitch and forcing Jordan to beat them with his legs, and he can't there. It's DeMar Hamlin with another big tackle on third down, forces fourth and inches and backed up on about their own 20-yard line. They're going to have to settle for a punt. So Wea goes in motion for Danucci, who's going to roll out to his right. He's going to throw, and that's George Aston again underneath for a nice six-yard gain, just enough to keep the ball moving forward for the Panthers. Second and four now. Danucci on the read option. He's got plenty of room ahead of him. Big block from Brandon Hodges and Ben Danucci is off to the races. He's into Georgia Tech territory and slides down at the 35. So Ben Danucci with a huge run and the Panthers are in scoring position to try and tie this game up or even better yet, 
take the lead. Second and six. Danucci drops back, looking to pass. He's found his tight end, Chris Clark, across the middle, and that's a good game for the tight end. 15 yards for the transfer from UCLA, and the Panthers are in business. So first and 10 from the 15-yard line. They've got Danucci in kind of the long set shotgun. He's going to hand off to Whitehead on the jet sweep. Jordan Whitehead's into the open field, and Jordan Whitehead is into the end zone. A 16-yard touchdown, and he can do it all. Whitehead has been all over the field shutting down this Georgia Tech running attack in the second half and now he's into the end zone giving the Panthers the 24-20 advantage. Third and 10 for Georgia Tech now. Long attempt and it's going to be Jordan finding his receiver Howell, Harlan Howell, bringing in a 22 yard grab and a first down so Jordan's shown he can make some throws when he needs to and the way the rushing attack has gone, he's going to have to do that. That's James Folston, the Panthers right end, breaking into the backfield blowing things up for a three yard loss so second 13 Jordan's back to pass he's going to scramble and Jordan Whitehead's going to meet him and force him to be twirled down and that could be a huge play he is spotted just short of the first down and it's going to be third and inches they're going to run the option here Jordan out to the right and he's brought down that is freshman Sean Wolfgang we talked about that he would have to play here for Dwayne Went Hendricks being injured and Wolfgang blows that up in the backfield Jordan actually goes down with an injury and backup quarterback Taquan Marshall has to come in for a huge fourth and four play he overshoots his receiver and the Yellow Jackets will turn the ball over on downs the Panthers will play takeaway and this is going to set up a great great chance for them second and eight now is Danucci's under center Whitehead's in, checked into the game and he is going to take the handoff here scoots his way outside one tackler to beat and he could have maybe had first down yards, but he's going to be stopped short. So it's third and six as the Yellow Jackets take the first time out of the half. Danucci's back to pass. He looks. He's got Matthews over the middle. It's just a three-yard gain, and it's going to set up fourth and three for the Panthers. And they've got the offense out on the field, a five-wide set. They're going to go for the juggernaut here, try and take out Georgia Tech and just end it potentially right here. Danucci just letting the play clock roll down, surveying the scene. He's going to drop back to pass. He's going to roll out, and he's got plenty of room to scamper forward. Danucci into the open field. He's all the way down to the Georgia Tech 10. A huge run from Ben Danucci using his legs like we know he can. And the Panthers are in business here. He's going to hand the ball off. That's Quadri Olison who finds his way down for about six yards to the Georgia Tech 4. Now it's third and one for the Panthers on the two. Pretty much one or two more plays, and they can nearly run out this clock. Danucci's going to have it. It's George Aston, and he's going to fall forward into the end zone, and that is surely going to do it as the Panthers will take a 31-20 lead with just a minute to play. Georgia Tech out of timeouts. They are going to have to move the ball at hyper speed. Jordan, though, third and 10, and he makes a great throw. That's Ricky June on the leaping 23-yard grab. And Georgia Tech is up to the 47-yard line. Jordan, though, back to pass, and he is brought down. That is Keyshawn Camp busting through the line and forcing the sack. So Georgia Tech forced to spike the ball because they had to try and stop the clock. Jordan back to pass now, third and 14. He's going to look deep. That's going to be knocked down. That's Kaiser Artis Scott, another freshman, making huge plays. We talked about that in the coverage leading up to this game. Those freshmen that have made such key plays. We've seen Wolfgang make a big play. Artis Scott. Scott make a big play. Jay Bump with a field goal. Jordan and Jenkins making big plays. And that's a huge play. That's going to be Paris Ford and Dane Jackson combining, or excuse me, DeMar Hamlin on the tackle. Forces the fourth and down uh, turnover. The Panthers will take the ball away and kneel the clock out for a victory. Your player of the game, Quadri Olsen, 100 yards on the ground. Nice game with a touchdown as well. So just a fantastic performance from the Panthers. You know, it really looked bleak in that first half. Three interceptions. They were getting run out of the stadium by this Georgia Tech option of offense. But the Panthers made adjustments very similar, honestly, to the way that the Panthers beat the Yellow Jackets last season. They made adjustments, stopped that option attack in the second half, and they relied on their bread and butter of the last couple weeks, which is their rushing attack. Olison did well. Darren Hall did well. Danucci used his legs when he had to, and it led the Panthers to a come-from-behind scored 24 points going away victory here in Atlanta. So as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Hail to Pitt. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.